Welcome to today's video. If you guys are new, my name's Liz and for today I have our August Craft Club tutorial putting together the kits, showing you how I painted them so that you can get some inspiration on how to finish yours. So without further ado, let's jump in. For our August kits, these are actually some of my absolute favorite that we've ever done. This first one, this really fun witch's hat. I'm going to show you different ways that you can finish it up, other items that you can use with your kit to spruce it up a bit. If you got kit two and three, then you're also going to get this six by six paper pad that comes with so many fun prints for Halloween. You can use them on these kits. You can use them on other DIY projects that you have going on so that is always the fun thing for kit two and three and then here are all the pieces that come with this kit so the first thing that I'm gonna do is take some paper that comes with that six by six paper pad I wanted the paper to kind of peek through on the project so I took this piece of paper and I started ripping it up into little pieces you can do this however you like you don't even have to do this if you don't want but I thought that this was a fun little addition to the project so I started ripping mine up I didn't want any of those straight edges so I tore those up and then I just started placing them around both the base of the hat and the top of the hat. Once I had as many pieces as I wanted, I set those to the side and I started painting my hat. So I'm just gonna paint everything with one coat of black paint to begin with. I always personally like using chalk paint because it dries a lot quicker, but any black paint will do. Once I have my hat painted and the paint is still wet, I'm gonna go in with a rusty orange color and using a natural sponge, I'm going to bounce it up and down. You can see I tried to use just a regular sponge brush at first. That didn't work super well, so I did change to a natural sponge. And I just did up and down dabbing motions on that. I wanted my hat to look really weathered and old and grungy, and I thought that this was a really fun addition. And I'll do that both on the base of the hat and the top of the hat. And here is what it will look like when you're done. Now another fun addition that you can use for your projects are Chocotour transfers. I love this so much. I wanted to add a pattern to my hat. Again, making it look old and grungy. So I chose this pattern right here. I just cut that out. I'm going to wax my piece first because this is wood and it's a porous surface. You're more likely to get bleeding when you do it on wood. If you wax it first, that's going to protect it from bleeding. So I always wax any of my porous surfaces first. So like I said, any wood surface and I'm using Chocotour, you're gonna wanna make sure that you give it a good coat of wax first and I do get that wax from Chocotour as well. Then I'll lay my transfer down right on top. I'm going to use my bright white chalk paste and I'm not going to chalk this entire thing. I just chose little bits and pieces all over to go over with my white chalk paint. I wanted again this to look old and grungy. I wanted it to look like some of the pattern had faded and it wasn't a perfect piece. You can make this look perfect if you want. I chose not to. Once you have all of the paste on there that you want, you're just going to pull that up and reveal your pattern. And I did this on both the base and the top of the hat. Now once that's dry, I'm gonna set all of the pieces of paper out that I had ripped apart. I'm gonna use some Mod Podge and I'm just gonna put the Mod Podge down where each piece is going to be. Now you could put the piece of paper on top right away with the Mod Podge wet. I prefer to do the dry Mod Podge method. That's just me. I feel like it helps with wrinkling in your papers and it gives a better look. Just That's just my opinion. So I took my pieces of paper, laid them all out where I wanted them, and then added the Mod Podge where each piece of paper was. And then before I add my papers to it, I'm gonna let that Mod Podge completely dry. Once it's dry, I'll add my papers right on top, add some parchment paper on top of that, and then using my mini Cricut heat press on all the way high, I'm gonna go over each of those pieces of paper that's going to reactivate your Mod Podge and get your paper to stick to your piece. Now I'm going to go in a combination with some Dixie Belle Sea Spray and that burnt orange 
paint that we used previously and I'm going to mix these together. I wanted a chunky look, kind of a distressed look with that sea spray. So I'm gonna add a little bit of sea spray, a little bit of paint. I did end up using a little bit more paint in this. I just wanted the chunkiness from the sea spray on top of the paper. And we're gonna do some blending between the paper and the hat so that the paper looks a little bit more natural sitting on the hat. Once I have that all mixed up, I'm gonna take a paintbrush and I'm gonna do up and down dabbing motions along all the edges of the paper. Like I said, I wanted to be able to have that paper a little bit more blended into the hat, so I'll go in with the orange first and then I will go back in with some black. So like I said, I'm gonna use some more sea spray and some black, mix that all together, and then I'll do some more blending with it. So just the same process that I did with the orange, up and down dabbing motions around all the paper and just getting everything to blend in nicely together. I did also go in with that natural sponge again to give it a more natural look than the brush was giving me. Now onto our other pieces, we have our bat pieces. I'm just gonna be using black chalk paint to paint those and the spider. Along with the spider, you can use a black paint pen. I find that a lot easier to paint the legs with that versus just a small paintbrush. With the wire that comes with your kit, I wanted this to not be so shiny, so I went over it with some black paint as well. I did take some sandpaper to all of my pieces to rough them up a bit. Now I'm going to attach the top of my hat to the base just using some wood glue super glue that I get from the Dollar Tree. I wanted to make a bow to go on my hat. Now I I'm not very good when it comes to making bows. I wanted this to have something extra fun. These don't come with your kit, but I'm just showing you how you can spruce this up a little bit and make it something more than just a wood project. You can add ribbon to it. You can add really anything that you want. I took this Dollar Tree netting that you can get during the Halloween time. I cut a little bit of it off and wrapped it around the base of my hat and just stuck it there with some hot glue. Now I made a couple bows and I am going to stack them on top of each other just using some hot glue. Like I said, I am not very good when it comes to making bows, so this was my attempt <laughs> at a larger bow. I finally did buy a bow maker and I'm gonna start using that, but for the meantime, this is what I came up with. I'm gonna hot glue this right to the corner of the base of the hat and the top of the hat and then I found this cute little flower that I thought was perfect for Halloween time and I'm going to hot glue that to the middle of my bow. Now I can start assembling all the little pieces that come with my kit. So I layered on top of my bat pieces. I'm going to take that wire and string it through my bat and then I just took my little needle nose pliers did a couple little circles to make sure that the wire wasn't gonna come through that hole. I'm gonna wrap the wire around a pencil. Just anything circular that you wanna wrap it around works perfectly. I just wrapped it so that it kind of had that spring look to it and wrapped it pretty close down to the spider itself. Once I had that done, I am going to string that through the hole at the top of the hat and just clamp those wires together so it doesn't come apart. I let my spider just hang freely. You can glue him down to the hat if you want. And then I glued down my bat to the hat as well. And that's it for that project. I think that this one turned out so adorable. I love Halloween. It's my favorite season. And this hat just screams that spooky Halloween theme that I love so much. You can do this that cute Halloween look if you want to and make a really cute witch's hat, but I thought this turned out so adorable.
Now, if you have box number three, you're also going to get this witch's boot, which again, I love this so much. It's so much fun. And you'll also get these two accessory items with your kit number three. Here are all the pieces that come with your kit. You're gonna get bells and wire. And then here are all the wooden pieces that will come with your kit. I'm going to start off by painting the boot of the foot. I'm going to use three different colors. I'm going to use black, yellow, and brown. I'm going to paint the entire thing black, but I'll also go in with that brown and yellow to paint the sole of the shoe to make it look like it has a wooden sole. I added the brown first, but then did mix that yellow in with the brown on the sole to lighten it up a bit. I also mixed in some brown and yellow with the boot itself just to give it a little bit more dimension. For the leg portion, again, I'm just going to go in with some black paint. For the heel of the shoe, I went in with some brown paint. And then for the top of the stocking, I went in with some yellow and some brown and mixed those together and painted the entire thing. For each of the stars, I went in with that same little concoction of brown and yellow. I did go over it with a little bit more yellow at the end. For my spider, I'm going to use my black paint pen and paint that. For my bells, I didn't want to leave them that gold color. I wanted them to look a little bit more grungy. So I took that brown paint and just went over all of the bells. You could leave them that plain shiny gold if you wanted, but I wanted mine to look a little bit more dull. I'm going to take some sandpaper around all of my pieces and sand all the edges to give it a little extra pop. For my stocking, I wanted some ribbon on there, so I grabbed this ribbon. I thought this was so much fun. It was a little bit too wide though, so I did cut each of the sides down as even as I possibly could. I did take some strings out of the sides and the tops just to make it look a little bit more messy. Now using some Mod Podge, I'm just going to add that to my piece spread it all around, and then add my ribbon right on top. I'll go over the top of my ribbon with that Mod Podge as well. And I think that this helped to give it a less shiny white look. It doled down that white quite a bit, and I personally loved that look. Once it was dry, I went over it with a little bit of brown paint just to make the stocking look a little bit dirty. Now I'm going to start gluing my pieces together just using that wood glue super glue that we get from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to layer my two top stocking pieces right on top of each other. And then I'm going to cut the wire that comes with the kit in four even pieces. I'll attach that wire to each of my bells and then slide it through the hole that is on the top of the stockings, wrap those together, and then you have your bells attached to your stockings. I'll start assembling the boot of our piece. You can add the top part of your boot and then the back part will obviously go on the back. Then you'll add the back part of your heel and the front part of your heel. You can lay out your stars on your boot however you like them and glue them down. Now I'll add the top part of our stocking with the bells to our main piece. Now with the twine that comes with the kit, I wanted this to look like shoelaces with the holes on the boot. So I grabbed the piece of twine, I added tape to both ends, and I am going to string them through like you would a regular pair of shoelaces. When you get to the top, you can tie a knot and then I tied a little bow. With your spider, you're going to add the remaining wire that comes with your kit. Just twist that around the hole at the top of the spider, slide it through the hole on the top of the shoe, and secure that in place. I made a little rough bow using all of these pieces and glued that to the top. And that is it for this kit. I love these so much. Like I said, 
Halloween and fall time is my absolute favorite and I think these just are the perfect addition to my Halloween decor. And that is it for today's video. I hope that this was helpful in putting together your August craft kits. Let me know in the comments below how you did yours, if you did the spooky cute or if you went all spooky for your craft kits for the month of August. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and I will see you in my next one. Bye.